Hey, happy Sunday, everybody. This is Sports for Night and News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be the next Flyers video, the grittiest take, as we talk about the Flyers blowing another lead after James Van Riemsdyk is able to score two goals, one lucky off his back that Farabee almost got credit for, but it went in over Ferraro trying to save it beforehand. And, of course, the one on a nice wrist shot to start. But first and foremost, please continue to subscribe down below to help us get to our end goal of 195 by the end of January, up above on the easy-to-use widget. Hopefully, we can do better getting subscribers, and the Flyers can do getting wins. But, um, this was a game <clears throat> the Flyers really got trounced um, in the third period after JVR scored. The, the, the rest of the game, it was fairly even in the first two periods. It was just back and forth, kind of boring hockey. Jamie Baskow even tweeted it out. It wasn't the most... Um, interesting game <clears throat> uh, back and forth in the first two periods. There were no goals. The shots were pretty much even in each period, just separated by three or two shots of uh, 15 to 13 in the first in favor of the Flyers and 13 to 10 in favor of the Sharks in the second. However, in the second, I will point to the first thing that led to the defensive downfall and letting Tomas Hurdle and also uh, Timu Meyer on that one play just get around you to get it to Hurdle in front. Um... <clears throat> That downfall started in the second, where, like Mike Yo even said in his post game presser, in the second, the Flyers were way too defensive. The whole second period was almost them playing defense. Yes, they only allowed 13 shots. They kept them limited in the shots total for that aspect a lot, but you still can't be overly defensive in a period. And that's what the Flyers were in the second. Now, it looked like it wasn't going to cost them being overly defensive in the second because they got two of. Two goals on JVR's 8th and JVR's ninth. It'll be interesting to see as the deadline keeps coming on as he's getting hot if you look to move him um, when he's actually hot rather than hang on to him and we'll see what he can do as he has one more year left in his contract, being this team seems to be entering towards retool mode. Um, but he was able to pot two. Then, unfortunately, Tomas Hurdle <clears throat> was able to get uh, one back on the nice play by Timu Meyer. Um, as he's able to go around, get it in front, Tomas Hurdle was then able to tip it in, and then he was able to get it on another nice play by Timu Meyer behind the net as well as Brett Burns, both nice plays by both of those cats, Burns and Meyer's assist on both of um, Hurdle's first two goals, um, he's then able to put it in on the backhand after he's able to find the puck, claim it, and put it in, and then guess who had the assist on the game-deciding goal. Well, actually, before we go to that, I would say the game-changing moment in this game, minus, Toma, minus the defensive second period, that kind of just led towards, I think, the Sharks not really feeling overly pressured, even when they went down 2-0, because they realized they had the Flyers on the ropes. It didn't look like the Sharks were pressing. It looked like they were just playing their game after they went down 2-0, hence the way that they smoked them 20-5 uh, to in shots in the third, and the only good opportunities the Flyers had in the third were the two goals they scored, and otherwise they were garbage. So, um, <clears throat> didn't look like they were really reacting to that, like, oh, we're done in this game. The Sharks still look very free and easy playing their game, and obviously it showed, um, because they were able to get that goal by Hurdle, and they were able to get the backhander by Hurdle. Then also, before that, you have the game-changing save that might have ended it before that if Aiden Hill doesn't stop Joel Farabee, because then the Flyers have three goals. This all becomes obsolete. Tomas Hurdle would have had to score his hat trick in regulation in order to win the game. But even in that same token, that's a third chance. Yeah, you're, you're doing good efficient-wise, three good chances on five shots, but you can't be getting smoked. They got embarrassed in this third period after JVR scored two goals, and that's not something... Uh, you want to have. It's just it's a shame for Martin Jones, because Martin Jones played a very good game, had a one batted goal in front, didn't get a good block out in front, as Hurdle was able to get a um, backhander goal in a second, and then the overtime goal was a, <clears throat> it was a rush, opposing rush, and then he was able to just hold it, hold it, hold it, be patient with it, and pick his spot and score. So obviously, Tomas Hurdle is the player of the game. What first was the downfall, I would say, is that second period, even Mike Yo pointed to, where it became too defensive. Yes, the Flyers scored two in the third, but it looked like it didn't even affect the Sharks. They just kept playing their game because they knew they kind of had them where they wanted them, even though they were able to get the nice goal by JVR, and then really just a fortunate goal that York was able to pick up his first point, so congrats to him on that. When it then goes off of JVR, the Sharks, this is the, usually when a team, when they're playing a good game, goes down to nothing, you start to see them kind of press a bit, not usually, but sometimes, well, the Sharks literally just looked free and easy, kept playing the game, Hurdle scores a hat trick, obviously he's the player of the game, won the game for them, <clears throat> the secondary player of this game, though, 
I would say, and would it even help us get to overtime at that point with how putrid we played in the third period, would have to be Martin Jones because um, he didn't get helped out again in this game. The Flyers had a terrible closeout. Um, so he would be the second player of this game. And the third player of this game, uh, they gave it to Aiden Hill. I don't necessarily agree. I don't think Aiden Hill did bad in this game. Obviously, he made a key save on Joel Farabee. But because Brett Burns was literally involved in every single goal, as well as uh, Timu Meyer, um, other than, well, in two of three, Timu Meyer was involved. I would give it to Burns at that point where Timu Meyer is kind of like a coin flip between those two because both of those guys had great games in terms of helping to set up uh, Termas Hurdle. But I hope everybody enjoyed this key takeaways and recap from the Philadelphia Flyers. Unfortunate loss to the San Jose Sharks. They were able to get one point, but should have found a way to get two. They had a bad defensive second period, got the two goals to start the third, still couldn't hang on to the lead because it looked like the Sharks were not phased whatsoever. We were able to come back, and then the Flyers were basically just dead at that point, and then they went it in overtime on the Tomas Hurdle hat trick. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe, please, and subscribe down below or up above on the easy-to-use widget.